Okay, what we're going to do here is to look at this final examination uh, test, Form A, from our textbook. Now, in Math 105, we didn't cover some of this material, so if it wasn't one of our active topics, we're not going to have a specific question on it. But as background, some of these make uh, very useful just general review items. So, for instance, when we are subtracting here fractions, uh, what would be our technique? So, here we see we have to have a common denominator. Multiplying each of these fractions by 1 in the form, this one of 3 over 3, this one 4 over 4, and getting this for our numerator now, which are common denominators, and we end up with this as an answer. Now, the technique for combining like terms, they're all x to the first power, so these are like terms. We can add our 8 and 4 together, get 12, minus 3 would give us... 9x. So, some very basic items here. Here we want to work with exponents, but we do not want to have negative exponents. So, this is going to become a negative 4 to the negative 1. This becomes x to the negative 2. And this becomes y. Negative 2 times negative 1 gives us a positive 2. So we bring our negative 4 down. And that goes in the denominator. And we can put our negative sign there. This stays in the numerator, and we bring our x to the negative 2 down, and it becomes a positive 2 in the denominator. Number 4, as we look at it, anything to the 0 power is just 1. Okay, uh, number 5, if you substitute the 3... For the x here, and the 1 for the y, 3 times 1 is 3, minus 15, does that equal 4? No. So that's not a solution. Here, if we solve this equation, we get x equals a negative 25 eighths. Here's a little word problem. The sum of two numbers is 92. x plus y equals 92. One number is 14 more than the other. There's one number. The other number is 14 more. And uh, what are the numbers? And we get... 39 and 53. So when solving this, we would put them in standard form. And notice the y's cancel out. We get 2x equals this. Divide both sides by 2. We get one number is 53. Put uh, 53 there and then subtract 14 from it, and you get 39. So those are the numbers. Well, that was Chapter 1. So in Chapter 2, we did something with graphing. Find the slope and the y-intercept. Slope is our m value, and the y-intercept was our b value. So we solve it for the letter y, a positive y. So I transpose the y there, the 6 on this side, 
change signs. Here I get a positive y. This is our slope. This is our y-intercept. So the slope is 3 fourths. Our y-intercept is a negative 3 halves. In number 9, we're dealing a little bit with function notation. This is our function. We said we can always substitute the letter y for function notation. y equals this. This is our x value. We put it in a little t-chart. So our x is a negative 2. So negative 6 times negative 2 is 12. 12 plus 17 is 29. We're not going to have any like 10 on our test, so we'll pass that up. Now, these are systems of equations in two variables. We don't have any of that in our 105 course. We had some of this in our 100, but we won't have any like this on our test. And this is in three variables. We didn't do that. We won't have any questions like this. Although this is one that uh, is interesting. So let's take a look at this one. So Juan goes to the bank and gets change for a $100 bill. He gets tens and he gets $5 bills. I'm going to call the number of $10 bills X the number of $5 bills, Y, and he gets 14 bills. So number of 10s plus the number of 5s is 14. Now, how much are the 10s worth? Well, 10. How much are the 5s worth? 5. And altogether, it's $100. So these are my basic two equations. How do I solve it? Well, I want to modify one of the equations so one of the, t the letters cancels out. So I'm going to multiply this top equation by a negative 5. So each term by a negative 5. And I get this new equivalent equation. Now, when I add them up, I get a 5x. Here, this cancels out. I get a 0. And this is 30. 5x equals 30. Divide both sides by 5. x equals 6. I have 14 bills altogether. If x is 6, y is going to be 8. So these are my two answers. And that's how we would do this one up on top as well. Again, we're not going to have any like this because we didn't count that in our, or we didn't do that in our math 105. And we didn't do matrix. Now we did do some of these. Do you remember the formula for this? The equilibrium point for the demand and supply. And we said we could substitute a y for this and a y for that. And we would have this equal that. So we set them up. This equals this. We transpose the 44. becomes negative. It gives us a 42. Transpose the negative 3p. Add it to this. gives us 7p. Divide by 7. Divide by 7. We get p equals 6. So when the price is $6, our demand of the number of units would be 68. And we just put our 6 there. 4 times 6 is 24. 24 plus 44 gives us our 68. OK, so that is one that we actually had that might be on our final. In fact, I think there's one like that on our final. All right, let's go on to Chapter 4 now. Now, we did do some graphing of this, so let's look at our techniques to solve this. So our x term is in the middle, so this is a compound inequality. We want to isolate the x term, so we'll subtract 3 there, subtract 3 there, subtract 3 there. 
gives us a negative 15 minus 4x minus 3. Now to isolate the x, and again we want a positive x, we're going to divide by a negative 4. Now whenever we divide by a negative, we have to reverse the directions of our inequality to keep it true. So this is what's going to happen. And then we get our answer. OK, so this is going to become a positive 15 fourths. Our x is in the middle. And this becomes a positive 3 fourths. And again, this is the smaller. So x is greater than that, but less than or equal to this. So when we plot that on our graph here, I guess we're going to use this here. It'll be over here somewhere. This is where 3 fourths is. And 15 fourths is over here somewhere. And we're going to use a parenthesis for this, but a bracket for that, and just fill it in. Now, that's the graph. Interval notation would be basically this number with a parenthesis on this side of it and a bracket on this side. And in uh, set builder notation, we would just put a line there, an X there in front, and braces. OK, for number 17, again, this is absolute value of X is greater than 4. This will be a disjunction. I'm just going to sketch it right over here. So it'll be x is greater than 4, just straight like that, which would be this. This is a 4. This is a negative 4, and we just reverse the sign. So x is less than negative 4. like so. OK? And number 18 is a trick question, isn't it? Why? Because you can't have a negative value for an absolute value. The absolute value is always its positive. And for this one, we just write it without the absolute signs, just like it is, without the absolute signs. Then we write the absolute signs, take it away, reverse the inequality sign, and then the opposite sign. So we'll get two answers here. And again, this is a disjunction. It'll look sort of like that, whatever the answer is. OK, again, we're looking for strategy, not necessarily the answers, although the answers are nice, too. And we did have uh, one like this, so let me set this up. So again, they didn't give you too difficult a one to work with. $24 a day, right there and then 20 cents per mile. So you subtract both sides, uh, 24. So it'll give you this is less than or equal to 71. Then you're going to divide that by 0.2. Divide this by 0 0.2. And you get for an answer, uh, 255 miles. Now I'm using my mouse to write here. Don't have my pen set up. OK, that was chapter four. Again, a little review of the kinds of things we might find and 
we can't find all of this. So for chapter five, again, some of these things we didn't feature because we started at 5.3. But we're looking for like terms. These are like terms. These are like terms. This is a like term. And we said if you put them in vertical columns, if you have that difficulty there, and that'll give you an answer. And here we're just going to FOIL first, outers, inners, and last, watching the signs. And then here to factor, remember this is the difference of perfect squares, so it'll factor into its conjugates. Uh, 6x plus 1, 6x minus 1. And here we can just take out a 6 first. And then we get x to the third plus 1. Ah. Now we have the sum of perfect cubes. So again, our 6 is there. And we're going to have a parenthesis for two terms, parenthesis for three terms. Whatever sign we have goes right there. Middle sign over here is the opposite of this. And then this is the cube root of this is x. Cube root of that is 1. We square this. Multiply these two together. Square that. And that is the answer to this one. Now we have here three terms. Mm, this one's a little tricky here. Four terms, but these three terms, if I put a parenthesis right there, this is a perfect square trinomial that will factor into y minus 3, the quantity squared, minus... Uh, 4 x squared. Now we have the difference of perfect squares, which will factor into, we're going to get three terms in each one of these. This one's a little tricky. So it'll be y minus 3, y minus 3, and then 1 will be a plus, 2x, and the other one would be a minus 2x. So this one's a little tricky here, but uh, you think you might have factored it by grouping, but no, there's a perfect square trinomial. This is one of the uh, things here. And here we're going to find the zeros. So uh, let me set this one up for you. So here it's this equals 5. So this equals 5. Now notice the 5's just subtract out, and we get this then in standard form. We factor out the 2x and this, equal each of these to 0. Which is what I have here. Divide both sides by 2. x equals 0 is one answer. And then just transpose that. x equals 4. Okay, chapters 1 through 5. Again, a little bit of a review. Now, going into chapter 6, uh, I recall some of you didn't do all your study plan on 6. And, you know, you're going to get some like this. Not uh, number 30, because we skipped long division. 
So let's just see what we have here. What's the lowest common denominator between these two? Well, this is the difference of perfect squares. So this is going to factor into x plus 1, x minus 1. And this factors into x, x, 7, 1. I need a positive for the middle term and a negative there. So what is my common denominator? Well, I'm going to need one of those, because that's the greatest number of times it's used in any one factorization. It's used once. Now I need one of those, because it's used once there, and once there, but the greatest number of times is once. So I just need one of them, and then I need this one. So there's my uh, least common multiple there. Okay, for this one, they want us to solve it. Now, it's a fraction equaling a fraction. So what we said we could do here is just cross multiply, and I'll set this up. So we're going to take this 3 and multiply it by this, and then this 2 and multiply it by this. So when we distribute, we get this. We're going to transpose the 4a, gives us 11a. Negative 6 gives us a positive 6 and another positive 6, 12. And then we get 11a equals 12, divide both sides. There's our answer. OK, now for this next one, we're saying Ebony can paint a house in five hours. So that person's rate is 1 over 5. Her partner can paint the house in six hours. So his or her rate is 1 over 6. How long would it take to paint the house together? Well, here we're going to multiply everything by the lowest common denominator which is 5 times 6 times t. So here the 5's cancel out, and I get 6t. Here the 6 cancels out, and I get 5t. And here the t cancels out, and I get 30. So I've made it into an equation with no fractions by multiplying every term by the least common denominator. So this is 11t equals 30. So t, I'm getting good with the mouse here, is 30 over 11 hours if they work together. Okay, we didn't do long division, so I didn't put any of those, but we did have some of these. So let me set 31 up for you. <clears throat> so as we start this off, this is sort of like a fraction. L over 1 equals this fraction. So I'm going to cross multiply. So I have L times this, which is what I have here. And this is just 1 times that. Now I want to solve for capital D. So i got to get it out of the parentheses here. And this is LD minus L lowercase d equals D capital R. Now I want to isolate my capital D term. So I'm going to transpose that over. And on this side, it becomes a plus LD. And it's gone now from there. 
erase that a little bit. And how do I get the D by itself? Well, I just divide by L. And that's my answer. Big D equals that. Okay. Not too bad. All right. Word problem for Chapter 6. And actually, on your final, there are some problems that are not shown here that uh, you may want to review from the test that you actually got back on Chapter 6. Again, I didn't make this up. I'm just using this as reviewing general techniques. But there may be items on my final that are not commented here. For instance, adding when they are different denominators, and you have to make them the same denominators. And then when you have to divide fractions and factor and flip them over and things like that. I'll see if I can come up with something on that a little later. So as we do this next one here, we see the reciprocal of 4. What's the reciprocal of 4? 1 over 4. Plus, there's your plus, the reciprocal of 3, right there, is the reciprocal of what number? So there's your basic equation. And we're going to multiply everything by the least common denominator, which is a 4 times 3 times n. And we did one just like this with the work problem. So I'm not going to do that one here. I'll let you do that. Or Again, we want to show you technique. Uh, y varies directly as the square of x. y is equal to k x. This is the direct variation. And then it's the square of x. So we substitute our y is 30.6. We don't know what k is. That's what we're trying to find out. And x is 15. But remember that 15 is squared. And we have to solve for k. So we have to square our x, which is 225. So we divide both sides by 225. That's what k is. So now we know what k is. We have to find our new value here. We're going to have y equals 30.6. That's our k over 225 times 8 that we're going to square. So if you have a calculator, this is 64. 64 times this gives you a number. You're going to divide it by 225. And y is going to equal 8 point seven zero four and just to let you have the answer for this one if you want to work it out n equals twelve sevenths okay well I'm going to stop here for a little intermission and then we'll finish chapters seven eight and nine